Good morning. Welcome to the kickoff event marking the official launch of the 2020 Census in Lexington. I'm John Shotwell. I'm the manager of the Area Census Office here in Lexington. Uh, we're in Suites 110, which is just back behind you, and 112, which is just on the other side of the elevators here. The office name is a little misleading. Uh, when you say Lexington area, it's actually 77 counties. Uh, they proceed from Boone County to the north, all the way to Pike County to the east, down to Bell County on the Tennessee border, all the way west to Barron County in South Central Kentucky. We cover a lot of territory. We'll be sending census takers out to cover about 20 million square miles of eastern half of Kentucky. Census day is April 1st. Before that, we'll have enumerators calling on group housing, dormitories, nursing homes, prisons. We'll be combing non-traditional areas, such as marinas, campgrounds, carnivals, soup kitchens, shelters, even non sheltered areas where displaced persons congregate, such as under bridges and in city parks. Kentucky, Kentuckians who receive their census forms in the mail, and you can find a sample on the census website, 2020census.gov, um, will be able to respond by mail. They can call a toll-free number, or for the first time, complete it online. We hope this will improve the response rate, but history tells us there's likely to be a substantial percentage of residents in our region uh, who don't reply. And that's where we will send thousands of census takers going to those residences to ensure that every man, woman, and child is counted in the, counted in the eastern half of Kentucky. You may be asking, where are we going to find all those census takers, particularly at a time when the economy is very positive and the unemployment rate is low? The answer is we're still looking, we're still hiring. We have a critical shortage right here in Fayette County. Fayette County, by the way, accounts for 20% of our applicant goal for our region. We're not, necess not necessarily looking for people who are looking for jobs. We're looking for people who are looking for a new experience, a way to serve their country and community while working flexible hours and make a little money along the side. And by the way, enumerators will get $19 an hour here in Fayette County. I would like now to introduce our partnership specialist. Her name is Danny Rogers, and the partnership specialists are employees of the Census Bureau who came into the communities early to develop community support with local governments and local organizations. And she could tell you a little bit more about why it's so important uh, to uh, work with the census. Danny? Thank you so much. I apologize to all the media for my shininess. My glam squad did not make it, and that's okay. Um, first, I would like to say a special thank you to Frank's Donuts, who donated our donuts for after this. Um, they are located at 549 East 3rd Street in Lexington, and they have locations in Georgetown, Paris, and Winchester. And I'd also like to give a huge thanks to a cup of Commonwealth who donated the coffee, which I'm sure all of us need. Um, they are located at 105 Eastern Avenue, and they have a location in Georgetown at 100 East Main. So thank you definitely for them. I would also like to thank all of the staff here um, at the census office because they have stepped up in ways that I cannot enumerate. <laughs> um, and I would also like to thank you, Craig, for being like a key to um, a lot of my sanity. Thank you, thank you so much. So I am Danny Rogers, I'm a partnership specialist. Um, I do focus on working with state and local government officials um, and community leaders, community members to help raise awareness, education, and help build strategies around 
um, making sure that everybody gets counted. Because what, we, what I've learned in this position, I've been here for about a year, is that we really do care. As Kentuckians, you know, I may not be, a, listen, don't, don't take this the wrong way. I don't know basketball like that, okay? <laughs> it's not about UK or Louisville for me. For me, It's the fact that we as Kentuckians, honestly, we do come together when it's necessary to um, get things done. And that's been shown in a number of different ways. We have what's called complete count committees that we've established to make sure that we have strategies for all different aspects of the community, right? We have um, a, a CCC at BCTC, Regina Shank is the chair of that. Thank you, Regina. Um, we have um, a CCC that covers Lexington and Fayette County, and Commissioner Ford is the chair of that. And there are some CCC members here, aren't there, from Lexington and Fayette County. Can you raise your hand? As you can see, they represent a whole lot of different organizations and parts of what makes Lexington uh, successful, but we have CCCs in all the different counties that we cover. And the reason why we do that is because it is that important to us to make sure that everybody gets counted. Marginalized groups, hard to count groups of all kinds, LGBTQ, seniors, um, children under the age of five, college students, all kinds of different groups, communities of color, non-English speakers, the list goes on. We want to make sure that everybody gets counted. It is that important because the money that is allocated for these groups depends on that representation. And we want to make sure that everybody knows that. That it's safe, that your information is protected, okay, and that you can do it online. So if you don't, like me, like a lot of people coming to your door, you can do it online, by phone, or by mail. Nobody's coming to your door. It's finished, four minutes, you're finished. Okay, so we wanna make sure that everybody knows that. I wanted to say that quick word about um, us as a community and a thank you to all of you who have helped make this possible because it does take all of us to ensure this accurate count. Thank you. Before I introduce our next speaker, I'd like to tell you a little story. It's only take a couple of minutes. Uh, about a month ago, uh, we had a meeting here in this building. We had our counterparts from Louisville and from Southern Ohio, and some of the dignitaries from the Philadelphia Regional Census Center were here. And I was directed to set up a catered lunch. So I took the easy way out, I called Subway, and I was talking to the Subway Catering Office and gave her my order, and she said, who did you say you were with? And I said, Census Bureau. She said, what? And I said, Census. And she said, S-E-N-S-E-S? -S -E -S? No, no, I tried to explain to her what the Census was all about, and she didn't have a clue. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there like that. And that's why we need all of your support to get the word out about what the census is all about and why it's so important that we participate. It's now my pleasure to introduce Philip Plutz, Deputy Director, the U.S. Census Bureau's Philadelphia region. Phil? Thank you, John, and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Um, I didn't, I didn't do my check off today. Uh, I think yesterday I had was 69 days till census day. Somebody check the math on that. That makes 68 days. April 1st, it's, it's coming around. It's our once every 10 year self portrait of who we are as a country, where we've been and where we are going. And that's what we're asking you to do. Stand up and be counted on April 1st. So we're going to hear today from very, some distinguished speakers about the importance of participating in the census, the importance of being counted, and how that data are used. So I'd like to just go back, especially with the video playing on the history of the census, just to remind people why we take the census in the first place. It was a revolutionary idea back at the founding of our country that the people could control the government rather than the government control the people. And they do that, and we do that, by standing up and being counted so that each person counted has an equal voice in your own governance. 
And that is as true today as it was in 1790, as we're about to conduct the 24th census in our nation's history. So our goal is very simple. Count everyone, count everyone once, and count them in the right location. Anyone think that's a simple job? <laughs> As, as John said, it uh, sounds like uh, Danny and crew needs to do some outreach to Subway to, uh, to get the, them aware of, of the census. Um, so let me tell you what is going to happen. Around mid-March of this year, or just not too long from now, people, uh, households will receive an invitation to respond to the census. They'll get it either in the mail or, or in some of our rural areas, a census worker will actually deliver uh, a notification. And as John said, we're going to ask people to respond. Go online, call a toll-free number, fill out the, the paper questionnaire. Uh, this year, we're making it even easier. You can, you can actually complete the census in the language uh, that you're comfortable with. There will be over 13 languages available uh, to respond to the census. Uh, there's going to be 59 language guides, and I know here in Lexington we certainly have enough people who speak many other languages that uh, could use uh, information in, in their own language. So we are asking you to, uh, to come together as, as Chris and the Mayor and, and Deputy uh, Secretary Friedlander uh, is doing with the state to educate and motivate every resident of this commonwealth to participate in the census. So one of the things that you can do that the Census Bureau cannot, and that is be the trusted messenger. Now I'm gonna say something and, and, and it's okay to laugh. Uh, I'm from the government and you can trust me. <laughs> uh, our data that you provide to the census is confidential and you can believe me or not. But it is true that all information provided to the Census Bureau is by law protected by U.S. Code Title 13 confidentiality. We may not share your individual information with anyone, not other federal agencies, not, not law enforcement. We are even exempt from court subpoenas. We can only use statistical information. That's what the law calls for. Each of us has taken his oath for life to keep your information confidential and secure, and we take that responsibility very seriously. But we're not believable, and that's where you come in to help spread that message of uh, that your information is safe and it is secure. So uh, other things we'd like to need your help on, particularly in a college town, is that we count people not according to your legal address, but where you live and sleep most of the time. And that's the same rule that, believe it or not, Thomas Jefferson set up, who was the first director of the, of the first census in 1790, and we've been using that ever since. So college kids, you're counted here, where you live and sleep most of the time. So um, we did talk about the awareness. One thing that we are doing to help you, we'll start to see a very robust national advertising campaign to create that awareness. We know that that will help, but uh, still, with many of our marginalized populations, we know that that personal touch that only you can provide will have the greatest impact, and we really do appreciate you being here. So, um, Mayor Gordon. Uh, we're going to have something on the Census Bureau website that you need to be aware of. It's going to be called the Response Challenge. And you will be able to monitor how well Lexington is participating in the census compared to, I don't know, Louisville? <laughs> and Secretary Friedlander, same thing. Uh, you can see how Kentucky is responding versus, uh, I don't know, Tennessee. Um, so I don't know, you know if we have uh, any like, competitive juices here or not, but that is something you should be aware of, and we look forward to uh, friendly competition, and I don't know if there's going to be any wages, wagers involved or not. I'll leave that up to, up to you. But I do want to, um, again, thank you for being here, and just remember that the Census is, involves all of us. It's not something that the Census Bureau does uh, to you or for you. It, we do it with you. So thank you very much.
Thank you very much. I didn't know we were going to have a report card on the website. Um, that's good to know. I would like to introduce now, it's my privilege, Mr. Eric Friedlander, Deputy Secretary of the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning. Uh, very happy to be here in Lexington today, even though it's a bit of a drizzly day. Uh, I uh, am Eric Friedlander. I am now working for the Cabinet for Health and Family Services with state government, but just prior to that, I was working in Louisville on the Complete Count Census Committee, so uh, challenge accepted on all of that. Um, but also, I say that to say that I am sold completely on the importance of the census. It is critical to Kentucky families. It's critical to all Kentuckians. This is how we make sure that we have our proper representation in Washington. So if we want to make sure we're represented in Washington the way we need to be represented in Washington, fill out the census. If you want to make sure that we have roads and we have the funding to have roads and transportation that we need to have in Kentucky, fill out the census. If we are looking for programs like our CSBG, CDBG, all of our block grant fundings that are put together and based on the population that we have in this state and we want to make sure that we're taking care of some of those vulnerable populations, the answer is fill out the census. This is how we have the greatest impact for at the next decade of funding. One person missed is about $2,000 a year if I remember the calculation correctly. And so when you think about that over 10 years per person, that adds up very quickly. And that's an opportunity lost for this state. That's an opportunity lost for a city. If we don't get those people in and counted and make sure our outreach is good and make sure that we're reaching hard to reach populations, we will miss out for this state. Uh, one of the other things, as, as well as the challenge of having a university in town, is also some of the younger, under three, I believe, uh, that's a very undercounted population, five, I'm told, uh, but for some reason people don't necessarily think that, that their child, their infant, counts on the census. They do, because they're going to be consuming services over the next ten years. So these are opportunities we need to take advantage of. These are things we need to be aggressive about in terms of our outreach because we will miss the opportunity for a decade to have this chance again. So make sure, tell your friends, anybody that you meet on the street, help people learn how to spell census at Subway. It's important. It's one of our civic duties. Voting is another one, paying taxes is another one, but answering the census is one. And it, it, it is important for all of us to do that. Thank you. Less, less shiny. Um, I would like to take this time to introduce Commissioner Chris Ford. Commissioner of Social Services, who is the chair of the Complete Count Committee here for Lexington and Fayette County, and um, just brag a little bit on all of the things that they've done. I'm not going to tell everything because I'm sure you're going to talk about it. But um, they've been almost a template for me to use when I go and, and work with other groups that want to create CCCs. So they've been um, absolutely amazing since about March of last year. They've been just diving in and coming up with all kinds of different innovative strategies on how to reach all the people here in Lexington and Fayette County. But again, that translates to ideas that I can then pass on to other groups who are coming up with their ideas for their particular counties. And I cover 12 counties, so trust me, it, it's been very, very helpful. So if you all would give a round of applause for Commissioner Chris Ford. Thank you, Danny, and good morning. Uh, thank you to our colleagues at the U.S. Census Bureau and congratulations on today's announcements. Your efforts uh, have been instrumental in supporting our local initiatives, as Danny's mentioned, in preparation for the 2020 Census. I wish to thank each of the community leaders who have dedicated time and energy to serve on our Census 2020 Complete Count Committee, uh, and they've been recognized by uh, waving earlier. 
We're fortunate to have a few members here, and believe it or not, there's still more that couldn't be with us today. Uh, we feel very confident that we are well ahead of where we were a decade ago, and we hope that that will uh, show with a more accurate census count here in Lexington. So thank you to our committee members. We hope, as a committee, that our work will raise awareness on the importance of an accurate census response by broadening engagement with traditionally undercounted populations. Also, I personally wish to express sincere appreciation for the united support, unified support, from our local government. Many people have contributed to making census a priority for urban county government, including our CAO and our council office. And leading the charge, our mayor has been at the forefront in helping to ensure every member of each household in Lexington is counted in the 2020 census. And as you know, Mayor Gordon has now been in office for just over a year. And even with the demands of building an administrative team and balancing the city's budget, Mayor Gordon recognized the importance of the census early on. And with her very first executive order, established Lexington's Complete Count Committee. We're glad to have her join us this morning. I ask you to please join me in welcoming the Honorable Linda Gordon, Mayor of Lexington. Thank you so much, Commissioner Ford. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for being here in Lexington for this awesome day. I first want to recognize some of our local council members who are with us today. Council member Angela Evans is here. You want to give a, put your hand up. Council member Jennifer Reynolds. Council member Amanda Bledsoe. Council member James Brown. Where did you go? There you are. Yes. Thank you all for being here. I also want to recognize Missy McCray, who is here on behalf of 56th District Representative Joe Gravis. I want to recognize Tyler Staker on behalf of Congressman Barr. You're all, yes, they're all with us. And Kayla Bush on behalf of 77th District Representative George Brown. Thank you all for being here. And it is that time again. The census is here and we're gearing up and preparing. And I am so happy to be here with U.S. Census representatives to officially open our census office here on Corporate Drive. The city is working closely with the U.S. Census representatives to make sure we reach as many people as possible. Social Services Commissioner Chris Ford and our Complete Count Committee are developing plans to reach historically undercounted people. They've been meeting for about a year now. The committee is made up of dozens of city and community leaders from all walks of life, serving all kinds of people from education and social services to nonprofit community outreach, we are working hard to share the message of the census. This effort is now known as We Count Lex. Of course, that's here in Lexington. <laughs> because we all count, and it's important we are all counted. And so you can find out more about this information at wecountlex.org. The census is not just a tradition that happens every 10 years. It's required by our Constitution, as was mentioned, and it's critically important to Lexington. If you're interested in where schools are built, the condition of our roads, or where you go for health services, then you need to make sure to fill out the census and encourage everyone you know to do so. Hundreds of billions of dollars are distributed to state and local governments service programs based on census numbers. That's Medicaid, 
national school lunch program, federal Pell Grants, the Head Start education program, school redistricting, housing choice vouchers, wildlife restoration, location of bus stops, paving funding, districting for council members, and much, much more. April 1st is a huge day for us. It is the first day of the census, and that's only a few short months away. Be on the lookout for the three ways in which you can fill out the census forms, and I believe they were mentioned, digitally, by phone, or traditionally on paper. And if you're looking for a job, I tried to convince my retired husband <laughs> to help with the census. I may work on him a little more. The census may have an opportunity for you. This is another great benefit to our community. And I do want to say one other kind of um, out in left field thing. After many years, census records are made public. So if you have ever researched your ancestry, you can go look at the census records and find out about family members, where they lived, how many children they had, etc. It's a very interesting part of that. So thank you very much for being here and thank you to our U.S. Census staff and for the work you're providing to our own community. We count Lex. Let's all take the census. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gordon, and I hope you can convince your husband, Major General Gordon, uh, to join our cause. Um, I just want to mention again, we have some recruiting materials on some of our tables in the back. Feel free to help yourself. We are still hiring, and we still have a great need here in Fayette County as well as some of our surrounding counties. I also want to put it in plug. You might see these little cards uh, sitting on the table back there. It says, Be a Census Taker. It has the website on it. Uh, take one of these, scan it, copy it, pass it out to your friends, neighbors. If you have a website, put it on there. If you have a Facebook page, put it on there. We need to get the word out that we are hiring. Thank you very much for coming today.